Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to help you make sure that you are aiming to specific heights over the net on your ground strokes. Now, this video is courtesy of Essential Tennis. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. Now, here we have Svetlana Kuznetsova, former number two in the world. I want you to notice the arc she has on these topspin shots. Just look how the ball, she's not skimming the net, but rather she's actually lifting the ball up over the net with topspin. Now, there, there's a slice, and this is a great view of it. When you slice the ball, it's actually a good idea to hit the ball pretty low. And the reason is because since backspin makes the ball float, if you hit the ball too high, that ball is going to go out. You know, I talk to my students and I say, you know, what percentage of the time do you aim to a specific height over the net? And they just look at me like, I don't aim to specific heights over the net. It's so important. Let's look at this ball. It's so important that you are aiming to a specific height over the net. You can see how high this ball is crossing. It's crossing about three feet, four feet over the net. You don't want to think of just hitting super low over the net, but rather you want to stay away from the net and get height because... When you hit the ball higher over the net, that's actually when you get the ball to land deep. And that actually forces your opponent back and it makes it tough for them. There's another ball nice and high over the net. Now people say, well, Ryan, the only way to do this is to have world-class spin. Not really. You can hit the ball high over the net pretty slowly with no spin and the ball's still going to land in. So you want to have, sure, a moderate amount of spin. Uh, you can't just hit the ball as hard as you want, but the reason you're losing isn't because you're not hitting hard enough. The reason you're losing is because you're not being consistent enough and not hitting deep enough. The number one mistake players make is hitting it into the net. So have an arc on your shots. Actually hit the ball higher over the net than you normally do, and you'll find that you're a lot more consistent. And if you do move in slightly, you can see she comes forward a little bit, and you hit slice, then sure, hit the ball low. The thing about slice is it wants to go out if you have... Uh, slice backspin on the ball. If you hit too high, that ball's going to carry long. So on top spin, you want to aim higher because that ball's going to then land deep. On a slice, you can hit lower because it'll carry deep to the baseline. Now, before I draw this up on the big board, just remember, if you're looking for a coach near you, if you're looking for new hitting partners, or you just want to start playing matches against different people rather than the same people over and over again, go to playyourcourt.com. You can use my link in the description below, and I'll pin it in the first comment. Go find people in your local area who want to play against you. All right. When you play them at playyourcourt.com, I want you to aim, specific, aim to specific heights over the net. Let me ask you a question. What percentage of the time when you hit a ball, I don't care what shot it is, what percentage of the time when you hit the ball do you have an idea of how high you want the ball to pass over the net? Right? This is a really important question because it needs to have an answer of 100% of the time. That doesn't mean you always aim, it, or it doesn't mean you always hit your target. I mean, LeBron James tries to get it in the hoop 100% of the time, but he's not going to make 100% of his shots. That's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about what percentage of the time do you aim to a specific height. Here's the simple idea. As you move forward inside the court, you're going to aim lower over the net. As you move back, you're going to aim higher over the net. Of course, are there exceptions? Yes, and I talk about exceptions all the time in all my videos. But you want to know the rule first before you can ever talk about exceptions or worry about exceptions. Start with the rule. And the rule is, as you are farther back, you aim higher, and when you move in, you aim lower. Now, if you're someone who your shots land pretty short, so you're hitting the ball and you're like, man, every single ball I hit lands in the service boxes. You're a singles player and you know that depth is the number one way to force an error from your opponents. And when you hit deep, it pushes them back, it forces them to take the ball off the rise, which most people don't like to do. The way to get depth, one of the ways to get depth is to just hit the ball higher over the net. I mean, if you hit the ball super high over the net, wouldn't the ball go out? right? <laughs> if it didn't have enough uh, sufficient spin and you hit it really fast, of course. So the higher you hit the ball, the deeper the ball goes. So can you just hit the ball and like moon ball back and forth? Absolutely not. That's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm wanting you to do is based on the grip that you use, based on the amount of spin you put on the ball, based on how hard you hit the ball, have an idea of the height over the net you need that ball to cross in order for it to land deep. What I've noticed in my experience of coaching, I've been coaching for 25 years, 
What I've noticed is that people really enjoy hitting the ball low over the net. They like making the ball skim the net. They think it's really fun. You know what people don't struggle with? <laughs> Handling a ball that comes fast and low over the net. We enjoy giving it, but realize your opponent's not struggling with that ball. You know what we struggle with? High bouncing balls. I get that question all the time. Ryan, how do I deal with a high ball to my backhand? My, one of my first questions to that student is, look, I'm gonna help you deal with a high ball on the backhand, but do you ever focus on giving that ball to your opponent? And they go, oh, I never thought of that. Write a list down of the things you don't like, and guess what? That list is also the same list of your opponent. So when you talk about the things you don't like, when you go to the net, someone hits the ball at your feet, a fast serve right at your body. You don't like um, somebody who attacks the net a lot because you feel a lot of pressure. Realize those are the same weaknesses as your opponent. So when you hit the ball higher over the net, I'm not talking moon ball, I'm just talking four, five, six feet over the net. That ball's gonna land deeper, it's gonna push them back, they're most likely not gonna take it on the rise, and they're probably gonna hit shorter, you can then step in. When you're stepping in, you're gonna aim low over the net, and then, boom, you, you win. Winning isn't by luck. You can actually design your strategy to help you win. Every single time you hit the tennis ball, in your mind, have an idea of how high you're trying to hit the ball. One of the things I like to tell my students is, be the person who's averaging a higher height over the net. So if, if you're, this is you, you go to playyourcourt.com, you schedule a match for next week against somebody in your local area, you had no idea that they lived near you, but you're excited to play them, and all of a sudden they're hitting the ball low over the net, and you're hitting the ball higher over the net. You're clearing the net with more height. I would put my money on you, because you're gonna hit the net less, and you're gonna keep the ball deep, you're gonna keep them back, and they're gonna hit short because of it. Be the person who actually aims a little higher over the net compared to your opponent, and there's no doubt, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.